And welcome to the Nature Journal Connection. I'm your host, John Muir Laws. Today, we're going to be taking a really careful look at ways of using words and language in our Nature Journal that will be more dynamic, exciting, fun to do, and also much more useful to us as naturalists and thinkers and observers. The way your brain works when you use words is different than the way that it is going to be looking around and observing and documenting things if you're drawing a picture or counting things. And the words that you choose and you use make a difference. Words are an important part of the way that we actually think. So if I am limiting my words, I am limiting my ability to actually think on the paper. Some folks myself included, have challenges with certain parts of writing. So I am dyslexic. So I have a, a brain condition that makes it, well, makes the process of spelling very creative and interesting. I can spell the same word five different ways on the same page, and it all looks good to me. And so if I'm looking at an object and I say, well, gosh, this this, this fruit that I found on the forest floor here, it's, it's glossy. Now, how do I write glossy? Um, is that with one S or two S's? I don't know. Uh, maybe I'd better not use that word. Um, if I'm editing myself that way, I am limiting my ability to really think with words. So um, in your nature journal, you don't have to worry about spelling. You don't have to worry about grammar. You don't have to worry about handwriting. You want to use words, though, as fully and as expressively as you can. If you can understand what you wrote, your journal page, your writing is successful and useful. So as long as it is useful to you, you are the, most, you're the primary audience for using your nature journal. If it's possible to do it in a way that other people can read and understand, that's even better, but it is not as important as you, yourself, getting those words down on paper. The reason we want to think a little bit about other people is that other people would be interested in looking at these notes. Um, one of them is yourself 10 years from now. So if 10 years from now you look at your journal and you can't make sense of the ideas and the observations that you are documenting in your journal, then part of the value and the uh, utility of the journal has been lost there. But it is still, because in the moment here it got you observing and noticing more, it still is important for you to do. But if your 10 years from now self can also benefit from it, that's great. In addition to that, other scientists may be interested in looking at your nature journal years from now. Long after you're gone, your journal may still be around as a document of what you are seeing and observing at this place at this time. So we are still, scientists today, are looking at journals that were made hundreds of years ago for insights and ideas about what was there and what people were thinking about. And your journal can work in exactly the same way. Now, I could look at this and I could say it is um, small and it's green and it's purple and then think to myself, okay, I've used words, boom, on to the next thing. But there's actually a lot more that I can say about this. And so what I, I want to do is to look at the object and think to myself, what are some different categories of information that I could put in about it. I can apply this idea of different categories of things that I can make observations about in a lot of different ways. So if I'm looking at the base of this bay tree, I could get in here and describe the texture of it. 
right? In some places, it's got this very, very smooth, ripply bark. In other places, it's, it's, it's rough, it's flaky, right? I could talk about the, the things that I'm seeing growing on it. I'm seeing different kinds of mosses and lichens covering the surface. I could talk about the angles that the branches come out from this tree. I could get into the looking at the, the, the what is the shape of where it connects into the ground, or what are the what are the forms of the holes here in the base of this tree. Each one of these would be an area for investigation and for really active description in my nature journal. A completely different way of thinking about describing it, though, is with analogy. So if I say, this reminds me of, when I'm doing it, this reminds me of, I'm making an analogy, and I can apply that to this tree. Sometimes one of the best ways to describe something is by comparing it to something that you are already familiar with. So when I look at this, it reminds me of sort of melting candle wax. So I could say that the base of the tree is sort of, is, is sort of fanned out and like as if it's sort of melted wax. I could use other things. The texture of the bark is kind of like cornflakes. The texture of the bark here is like elephant skin. Whatever it is that in one way I connect with what I'm looking at, I can use those analogies to improve and make my descriptions richer. Let's take a look at four techniques that you can use to help you use words a little bit more dynamically in your nature journal. The first is labeling. So if you've got a sketch that you've made of some object, you can add labels to it to connect words to that illustration. So here I've drawn this little acorn. I'm going to put a little dot line. So dot line. I can say that's brown. Put another dot line here that says that's gray. All right. Now, you can also add labels a few other ways. Um, you can just use a simple line. Right, there's a line pointing to this one, and I'm going to call this small acorn. But I find it's a little bit clearer to put that dot in just to show people what's going on. Now, you can also use an arrow to point to things, so you don't have to go directly to the thing. You can show that there is a small point at the end of this. Another style for uh, adding labels is, let's say I want to uh, give a little bit more of a description of this, this little part in here. I can say that the cap is uh, covered with uh, bumps on the top of it, and the bumps get smaller towards the bottom here. So um, cap has bumps um, <clears throat> that are big at big at the top and small toward bottom. And what I can do is I can put this in a little cloud here, and I'm going to connect that with a little kind of voice-like arrow. And you see how that takes all this information and it says, hey, this information relates to this. A few other styles you can do for that is you can make it a box with an arrow. You also can make it sort of a voice balloon. with a pointer arrow. All those are styles that you can use. So labeling is trick number one. <clears throat>
Trick number two is what I call popcorn. And that is, let's say you've got some descriptor here. This is, this cap is brown. Um, and I think, ah, oh, you know, I want to do better than that. Sometimes you put down a word and your brain will go like, okay, I've used words. That's good enough. But take a look at some of your words and can you embellish that? So can I, what else can I say about that? It's sort of a, a warm red brown. I'm going to go warm and reddish. All right. Um, the gray is dull. The brown is glossy. So you see how I've kind of spidered out here, kind of popcorned these other ideas. Tying into this, it's sort of a mind map. You've got your kind of core idea, and then you're going to embellish that with other thoughts. That's a really good way to get yourself to this small point is blunt. Right? It's a good way to kind of get yourself to embellish what you're doing. That's technique number two. Number three is to take a is to is to create what we call a bullet point list. So if I want to write down some of uh, uh, descriptions about this, it's the uh, um, how do you spell acorn? Hmm. I think there are too many A's. I'm not sure. That's what's fun about being dyslexic. Um, so I've got my acorn, <clears throat> and what I do is I'm just going to put a little dot and make the first observation. All right, um, uh, gray cap comes off easily. And then I put another dot down here, and I put my next observation. Um, acorn is pale paler under the cap. And I put down another ball. So you see, I'm just making a series of little balls and I can just boom, 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 get a whole bunch of, um, of observations really, really quickly. For these little balls here, you can make them balls. You can draw those as, as little acorns if you want to, All right? Um, you can, but something that you kind of can draw quickly is good. And another strategy that you want to do when you're making one of these bullet point lists is that when you kind of get to the bottom of the list, just throw in an extra ball that is not connected to anything. When you do that, you're going to find that when you have that extra floating ball, you will often, a good idea will come to you that you can then fill into that space. So we have labels. We have popcorning. We have bullet point lists. Another thing we can do, of, of course, is complete sentences and even paragraphs. So um, when you do that, if you've done some of this work first, it's a lot easier. So I often suggest starting with this kind of stuff and then work your way into those paragraphs and complete uh, sentences. So um, let's say I want to write a little bit about the acorn. Here's kind of a fun way to do it. I'm going to start with a great big block letter A. And then my sentence starts acorns. Acorns are, and now I'm just going to put little squiggles in where I'm going to be writing so that you don't have to kind of watch me kind of write more slowly. So I'm writing in my observations here next to that big block letter. It's called a drop cap. I've put in a drop cap there. And this um, it's a it's a it's a fun way to kind of visually connect this with what I've got going on here. I can color this little a acorn color, sort of the same color that I am, you know, adding color to illustrations up here. Um, other uh, neat things you could do, you could even, if you wanted to, you could draw a little acorn cap on top of it. Um, why are you doing this? Simply because it is playful. And when I do this, it gets me to think in a little bit more of a loose, relaxed way. I can kind of have fun with the page. And, um, and that is good because if you are relaxed, you're going to be in a more creative frame of mind. 
Another thing that you can do in a paragraph like this, sometimes people think like once you write a paragraph, it's set, but it actually is really still very flexible. If I think of like some other idea that I want to add in here, but there's not space, I can just write that over here on the side and then show that this idea goes right in there. I can add another little note in detail up here, and that's going to go. You're going to find that when you start kind of adding these thoughts and you get some ideas down, and then the better ideas are going to come to you, start to annotate your writing, start to modify it right there on the page. You could even take this part of this sentence, I'm going to move it up to there. Um, so you can really, you can move things around, you can add things, you can change your mind about something and remove that. So actively edit yourself on the page and don't think like, oh no, that's going to look sloppy, like a work in progress. That's the deal. This is a work in progress. This is your thinking process. And when you do this to your writing, it keeps you actively thinking. So there's playing with full paragraphs and drop caps and little pictures of acorn caps, putting in labels. We've got popcorning these extra words in and creating bullet lists. All of those are in your bag of tricks for adding words to your Nature Journal page. Remember that our fundamental naturalist toolkit is I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of. We can write our observations, we can write our questions, and we can write the connections, the it reminds me of's that occur to us. We now have an expanded toolkit of strategies of how to better use words to access those. Our journal page, of course, can still include pictures, it can still include numbers, but Today, for our Nature Journal Challenge, what we want to do is spend a little bit more time focusing on how we can dynamically use words, and perhaps using words in some ways which we haven't before, on our Nature Journal page, to make it richer, to make it deeper, to help us record observations with greater clarity, and to open up some new areas for discovery and inquiry. I hope that you enjoy using these strategies and can incorporate them into every page that you do in your own nature journal. And until next time, this is your Nature Journal Connection. Doo -doo -doo.